Hi, welcome to this my second tutorial in my series on factorizing. Now in the first tutorial I showed you that if we are asked to factorize an expression then the first thing you should always check out is to see if there's a common factor. Now in these three expressions if you were to try that you'd find that there is no common factor. Let's take the first one ax minus ay plus bx minus by. You'll notice we haven't got an a for instance in each of the four terms. We haven't got an x in each of the four terms. Nor have we got a y in each of the terms nor a b. So how do we factorize this? Well this kind of factorizing is called factorizing by grouping because if we look at a pair of terms, let's take the first pair here, you'll notice that we've got a common factor. And that common factor is A. And what we do is we just group those two terms together, put an A outside a bracket, and we have inside the bracket an X minus a Y. So when you expand this, you're going to get AX minus AY, this pair of terms here. Now we look at the next pair of terms and in these two terms you'll notice that we've got b which is a common factor. So what I do is I write plus b here, open up a bracket and inside we would have x minus y. So when we expand this we'd have plus bx and then minus by, bx minus by. Now we haven't factorized this yet because remember when you factorize something you've got to reduce it down to one term. At the moment we've got two terms, one term here and one term here. In this first term we have got two factors, the a and the x minus y. a is being multiplied by x minus y so we have two factors. And the same here on this second term we have one factor b and we're multiplying it by another factor x minus y. But in these two terms you'll notice we've got a common factor x minus y. So because we've got a common factor across both terms we can pull that out in front of a bracket. We've got to be careful here though you shouldn't just go in and just write x minus y bracket that'd be wrong. You've got to treat this as one factor okay so you need to put it in brackets x minus y. So x minus y is being multiplied by a for the first term so put an a there and in the second term x minus y is being multiplied by plus b so we just write plus b. So we have x minus y times a and x minus y times b which is these two terms. We now have one term consisting of two factors x minus y and a plus b. One term so therefore it's fully factorized. Okay so as I say this is called factorizing by grouping obviously because what we do is we group up pairs of terms. Now I've picked this example there's a little twist to this one that you've got to be careful about but nonetheless you might want to stop the video and have a go at this one. So let's just give it a try. No common factors throughout but if we look at the first pair of terms we've got m which is a common factor. So we can write that this is identical to m bracket and we've got m times s here so we've just putting an s in here. We've got m times 2t squared so we just need to write plus 2t squared. So there's our factorization of the first pair of terms. Now we go on to the second pair of terms. Now you've got to be careful here because what you really want to have in your second bracket has got to be s plus 2t squared. And to get that I notice that I must pull out minus n as a common factor, not plus n, 
just minus n. So we put minus n here as a common factor, and so inside the bracket would go an s, so we get minus ns. And this is, as I say, is where you've got to be careful. It's not minus, but it's a plus. Minus n times plus 2t squared would give minus n or minus 2nt squared, which is what we wanted. So you can see we've got two terms now. Each term consists of two factors. The first term has factors m and then s plus 2t squared. Second term has two factors, the n and the s plus 2t squared. So s plus 2t squared is a common factor. So we pull that out the front okay, of a bracket. Don't forget to put that in brackets. So what goes inside the second bracket? Well, the m and the minus n. So you can see we've got s plus 2t squared times m, that one, and s plus 2t squared times the minus n, that one. So we factorised it, we've got two factors then. s plus 2t squared is one factor and m minus n is the other factor. Now in this last example, you've got to take care with this one. Again, you might like to pause the video and have a go. Anyway, let's just see if we can run through it. And I'll show you what the problem is. Again, no common factors all the way through. But if we take the first pair, this time we've got a number which is common to the 12 and 8. The highest common factor there is going to be 4. So we'll say that this is identical to 4, bracket. But we've also got an a which is common. So not only is it just 4, we've got an a that's common. So then we would have 4a would have to be multiplied by 3a to give 12a squared. And for the second term, 4a has to be multiplied by minus 2b to give minus 8ab. So we've got that. Now, when it comes to the second pair, what is common between these two terms? Well, 5 would be common to 10 and 15, would be a highest common factor, and so would a b. It's in both terms. So it looks like it should be plus 5b. So if I was to write plus 5b here, what would I have in this bracket? Well, I'd need another 2b to give 10b squared. And to get minus 15ab, I would need minus 3a. But look what we've got. We've got two terms. The first term is made up of three factors, the 4, then the second factor is the a, and the third factor is 3a minus 2b. In the second term, we've got three factors again, 5, first factor, b the second factor, and the third factor, 2b minus 3a. Notice, though, there are no common factors. This is different to this. Now, how am I going to get around this problem? This was the reason why I picked this particular example. Well, what we can do is we can see this problem coming and we could swap these two terms round. Let me just show you. Okay, let's just delete this out again. Okay. Suppose I write this now as 12a squared minus 8ab I write minus 15ab first and then put 10b squared on the, on the end. Okay. Now, in the same way, take the first pair. What is the highest common factor? Well, it's 4a. So we have 4a bracket. And then we're going to have a 3a inside. And then for this term, we just need minus 2b. Now, when we take this pairing, we've got the highest common factor would be a 5 from the 15 and the 10 and also a b. 
But if we write minus this time 5b, look what happens. Minus 5b would have to be multiplied by plus 3a to get minus 15ab. So we put 3a there. And when we come on to this term, we would need minus 2b to be here. So that when we multiply, so I missed out that 2 there, minus 2b. So that when we multiply minus 5b with minus 2b, we get the plus 10b squared. And notice now that we've got a common factor in the two terms. That common factor is now 3a minus 2b. So I can then pull that out, 3a minus 2b, in front of another bracket, and inside would go 4a and then minus the 5b. So we've got our one term consisting of two factors. So you've got to be careful on this last one. So just be aware of that point that you might have to switch terms around in order to try and get a grouping that works. All right. OK, well, that brings us to the end of this tutorial on factorizing.